is that bitch? I'll take it back. on the county's roads. Still looking good out and about on our motorways. No reports of any accidents or incidents. And traffic is still coping well through Farrington Just on Farrington ahead. Road. Turn right. 582. New lane closed on the Take west side. Take first exit and roundabout. It caused a little bit of congestion yesterday uh, during the busiest time. So we'll keep you updated. It's between Flensburg Way and London Way. The A6 where we've got the restrictions. Travelling from Bolton to Singleton. Traffic is still coping well. Just Turn ahead. Road. Take first road. exit and no roundabout. No to report on the trains. But if you spot any problems, call in if it's safe and legal, 0330 123 0181. Travel you can trust, more in 15 minutes, from BBC Radio Lancashire. Just ahead, take second exit at roundabout. Just ahead, take second exit at roundabout. Then, take first exit at roundabout. Just ahead, take first exit at roundabout.
traditionally the labor comes from socialism. No, it's labor calls conservative, sorry, the Muslims call them in. Because they're in the majority. All the electrons turn left. They can't prove it, but it goes on.
to me. Election day. 2015. I'm driving a Ford Focus 2007. 1.8 turbo diesel. And the mileage on the clock as of today is 181,414 miles. We're off to Manchester, to St Mary's. Sometimes you'll hear me talking to myself, it's quite common. Hopefully not so much cussing and swearing at other motorists. Some of these cages, I'm a cage of myself today, of course, but some of these cages simply leave you bewildered at how on earth they managed to pass the test right. in the first place. However, you will never change that. So it's up to you to drive Just better than them, right. show a good example try and maintain standards. This is the A56, just past the town of Haslinden. The road we're joining in the A56 going the other way goes to the town of Rottenstone. Rottenstall is pronounced Rottenstall, but it's spelt R A W T E N S T A L L. So it's it looks like Rottenstall, but it's pronounced Rottenstall. So many people in the media, understandably, get it wrong. Coming to the Rams Bottom turn off, and where it says non motorway traffic, that means that people who are uh, learners who are driving on a provisional license, uh, learner motorcyclists, they are prohibited as it says here on this blue sign in the middle, prohibited from going straight on. Because the A56 turns into the M66, a motorway from here. So now we're on a motorway. <coughs> this is a two lane motorway. traffic that it carries, it should be three lanes, but when it was built, um, traffic was much lighter, and like the M65 that goes past Blackburn, they had very, very poor foresight for the future. Now the M65, the first part from Blackburn to Burnley, was built in or opened in 1982. So it's only 33 years since. So really, the planners got that one totally wrong. Because it's two lanes, three lanes in certain parts, but most of it is two lanes. Now in winter, dark mornings, absolutely pitch black when you're driving at this time which is just just after seven o'clock now in the winter it is dark black as the ace of spades and as you can see there are no street lighting there are street lights further along this this stretch of the m66 when we hit Berry. However, they are turned 
Rudolph in the name of saving money and apparently to save the planet. And I have an opinion on that score about global warming or climate change as the politicians want you to know it is now. But I shall leave that for another day. Now well, technically I should be in the left lane, but apart from the fact that we're approaching a, 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 an on-slip to the M66, as you can see to our left, many times it's a lot busier than this, and you're better off being in this lane to allow other vehicles to actually enter the motorway. However, it is a giveaway line, just makes for a smoother, less stressful drive if you're out the way to allow them to enter. Now as you can see, on both sides of the carriageway now we've got street lighting. But as I said, they are not lit now. I think possibly it's midnight that they are turned off. And when there's an accident on this road, on the far left you can see there is the hard shoulder where breakdowns or other emergencies are allowed to go. You're not allowed to stop on that uh, hard shoulder unless in an emergency. But further along here you'll see that the hard shoulder is not there. Now when you break down, you have a puncture or a mechanical breakdown, the recommended advice is to leave your vehicle on the hard shoulder and get out of your vehicle and stand on that grass banking on the left there. In other words, away from your vehicle for obvious reasons, because if someone ploughed in the back of your parked vehicle and you were inside it, well. However, as you can see now, the hard shoulder is disappearing, so here, there is nowhere safe to go on the, on the actual carriageway, the hatched area where the white lines are. So, just imagine in the dark, just the, obviously the street lighting over the uh, other side of the bridge for the uh, houses and of course the headlights. Apart from that, you're in the dark. So, and it could be a bad morning, it could be raining, it could be snowing, and you're there in the freezing cold in the dark with traffic passing by you at 70 plus miles an hour. Nightmare. So dangerous. All in the name of saving money. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now in, in England now we have what's known as smart motorways. And on my video of uh, myself on the on, on the bike going down to Milton Keynes to see some friends. Um, I went on a smart motorway, the M6 around Birmingham. Now what a smart motorway is, you've got a hard shoulder, which apart from emergencies, uh, if, if, if the carriageway is completely blocked up, Police and ambulance services and fire brigade, they use that high shoulder to, to bypass all the, you know, stranded, uh, clogged up traffic to get to the scene of the collision. Right, so, what they've done now, they trialled it on the M42 around Birmingham. So 
of years ago. They have the hard shoulder as a part time lane. So you've got a, a gantry over the carriageway, like the one that's coming up with the uh, information on. About uh, this, on this one, it says Q on slip road, as you can see. Now these gantries for smart motorways are like the next one, I should say. The one that goes all the way across the carriageway. This one's flashing up. Advisory 50 miles an hour. It's not, it's not, uh, what's it like, compulsory. Uh, it's an advisory speed because of the queue on the left, the left two lanes. Because what often happens is uh, traffic jumps the queue into this lane that I'm in. This lane's going on on the M60 uh, towards Manchester Airport, etc. And what they do, they jump into this lane just to try to pinch a few more yards. Anyway, smart motorways. So what they've done, they've introduced the hard shoulder as a temporary lane. So over the motorway you'll have um, you'll have information, you'll have uh, signs saying if the hard shoulder is in use then there's a, there's a, a sign like a, an arrow um, that shows that the, that the lane, the hard shoulder is indeed uh, being used as a temporary lane. So of course, while that's been used as a temporary lane, there's nobody, nowhere to go if you break it down. Now, the M42 has uh, certain areas, every every few, I don't know how many, I don't know how many yards, uh, like a, 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 what do you call it now? Like a refuge area, where, you know, if you do break it down, you can pull in. But of course, if you break down in between these areas, um, then it, you're in Dickie's Meadow. You're snooping. You're knackered. So, you know, whilst it opens up another lane during peak times, um, it, it, it really is. Uh, a cheap and a nasty way of actually dealing with increased traffic. I mean, ultimately, with the, I don't know, last time I heard, I seem to remember 30 million cars on the UK's roads. And that's bound to increase. As the population increases, uh, a lot of families have more than one car. It's 500 yards. I can see the car becoming basically uh, redundant, extinct, Just ahead. a victim of its own success. Um, because there's only so much room. You can't keep building more and more roads. Now, Just ahead. Keep left. In England especially, the motorcyclist, or the motorcycle, is seen as a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, it's a, a snob thing, it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, that has always been, um, you know, unfortunately the minority, um, you know, they speed around the mechanics of themselves until they kill themselves. They make the rest of us, you know, uh, everybody thinks we're all the same. Um, and of course we're not. The majority are responsible uh, 
uh, law-abiding uh, citizens on the roads who take up a heck of a lot less room on the roads than, than cars. Now, some cities have introduced car share. Now, car share is great. I mean, you know, it should be encouraged. I mean, just ahead, uh, turn right. One, one place I can think of uh, off, off top of my head is Harrogate in North Yorkshire. Uh, there's the right signs as you're coming in. I've been there a long time now, so they're a bit faded. Where, you know, they encourage you to car share. It's not compulsory, it's totally voluntary. And, you know, why wouldn't you? Because, uh, you're, you know, you're saving fuel, you're saving uh, you know, the environment, you're, you know. And also, oh, there's a social thing. I mean, you know, I look around me, I'm looking now, everyone in their own little box. They're all sat there, all going to work, and all going whatever they're doing. And you look at people, and, and, and if your eyes meet, it's like they don't know what they don't know how to deal with it they, because everyone's shut away in their own little little space with the music on, with the uh, whatever they listen to, and as a result, society has become so fragmented. Um, now that guy there flashed because he wanted to come in because um, even though it's two lanes here, I'm in the right lane because A, there's a bus lane Attention. down here. Safety camera. B, there's often a parked van in the left lane. I don't know how on earth he gets away with that. I mean, that's, that's utter stupidity. Um, That van's not here today. Incredible, it's not here. I am a bit later today, not a lot, maybe five, ten minutes. But uh, the van's not there. So, we're all in our little boxes. She travels from Orange, 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 she travels from Radio Manchester's uh, traffic when it comes on. Not far, I think it's on around about now. Uh, yeah, so, you know, so not only will car share uh, help clear, miles. Turn left. clear the roads, um, it, it would actually encourage people to actually talk to one another and socialise. Now, the motorcycle can be part of the solution. It's not everybody's cup of tea to ride a bike. Of course it's not. You know, there are some people I know that, that, that I, I could never ever imagine them riding a bike. It's just not their scene. You know, bicycle, like the one on the left there, or motorcycle. Some people are just just more suited to be in a car. However, there are a lot of people that, that perhaps would take to two wheels, given the encouragement. Uh, and I say encouragement because um, the motorcycle test, although it's 34 years since I took my motorcycle test it's changed a heck of a lot even from when Lynn took hers um, you know they introduced this two part test which was like a theory and a practical um, whereas when I did mine you just basically got your bike and you stuck uh, L plates on and you, you rode on your provisional license and you just renewed it now when you put in for your test it was just a, a simple test that you, you 
went on like a bit of a circuit around, not far from, never far, you know, never more than a quarter of a mile from the um, the test centre. And the instructor, the examiner, I should say, uh, he used to just set you off on your on your on your little circuit. He'd say, right, you know, I want you to turn left down that street there, and blah blah blah, and you do it, and. The idea were, the clue was, uh, was to never, never look for it, because, you know, because, you know, he can't see at all times, but he can see you, and you can't see him, and, and the thing is, if you start looking for him, well then you're going to lose concentration, and you start making mistakes, and then, well, you're going to get a fail. Now, when I took my test, I failed it the first time. And the guy that took the test, he, it was absolutely pouring down. And I mean, throwing it down. And I'm sure he failed me because he got wet through. Piss wet through. Um, he was renowned to be a bit of a fierce character. Uh, uh, right, gruff Scotsman. Uh, he's probably dead now. Long gone. Um, and he failed me. Um, you're going along here and you're turning left into a, into a side street, into another road. And he failed me on not looking over my left shoulder when turning left. Now, I was riding a Honda C90, 90cc four-stroke at the time. So obviously, you know, I'm, I'm only riding in town, so I'm doing, you know, 15, 15 miles an hour just due to about, you know, to, to negotiate and just um, uh, execute this turn into this left turn and he failed me I'm not looking over my left shoulder now at the time I thought yeah, the rotten side you know but you know it's right because if you've got cyclists I mean cyclists now you've got your own cycle lanes now as you can see on, the, on your left not here we've, we've just it's just expired you know they do them at certain points you know but of course the cyclist you know, acting like Bradley Wiggins, or in your case, Brian Lance Armstrong. It's getting a little bit busy on some of these at main routes oh, now. Traffic's on, I'll just be quiet for a minute. Manchester, the M61 from Bolton is skewed quite heavily from the Kersley Spur. It's moving quite slowly at the moment from Junction 3 towards the M60. It's building on the inbound M62 from Watchdale. Likewise, M60, we're seeing traffic starting to slow around Denton Island, Junction 24, on towards the stop. Pyramid at Junction 1 and the M67 slow on the approach through Denton towards Denton Island. Building on the M6 southbound, this is Wigan towards 21A at the Croft Interchange, so it's particularly congested around Junction 23 at Haydock. And if you're on public transport, we've got issues on trams at the moment. The, the, the uh, delays appear to have been downgraded from severe to minor, but there was an earlier problem at uh, Broadway, a points failure. So it's affecting you uh, between Eccles National Line and uh, also on the Media City Line. Just may have to wait a little extra longer, a few extra minutes longer for a tram to come along. Anything you can add, it's 0161 228 2255. Becky Watt. Every Saturday morning, I attempt to surprise a bride or a groom as they prepare. That's a traffic report from Great, uh, Radio Manchester, BBC Radio Manchester. Uh, right, where was I? Uh, more cycle tests, yes. Yeah. So he failed me. Um, I'm not looking over my left shoulder. And that, at, at, at the time, you know, because of the cost and, um, you know, it wasn't a lot of money in, in today's comparison, but everything's relative. And, of course, the... Uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, go on motorways and wanted to get rid of my old place and I wanted to take a uh, billion passengers. And of course you can't do that on a provisional licence, so 
So I put in for it immediately again and on a bright sunny uh, early late spring early summer morning um, I'm pleased to say that I passed. Now as I said that was just a, a, a water part you know like a simple um, motorcycle test where you just put in for it you apply for it you test it and, and you pass or fail or whatever well now um, I don't know the details because I'm not involved in, in that but there's a lot more to it there's a lot more to it now I agree that motorcyclists need to be trained um, to a higher standard perhaps than a car driver I say high standards, different standard really. Um, however, riding a motorcycle in, in itself, uh, you become very disciplined, or you should do. If you don't, well then you're not going to survive, and that's that's the key, you know, survival. If, if you don't uh, uh, adhere to the basic rules, and right. you know, keep keep sensible, then you're not going to survive, you're going to come a cropper. And many, many do, of course. So, so I agree that the mall cycle test should be um, challenging, especially on today's uh, horrendously busy roads, you know, more complicated junctions than there were when I first started. However, there, there's some in the industry, in the motorcycle industry, that, that, that say that it actually puts people off. Uh, so they lose business, and motorcycling is seasonal, wherever you live in the world, um, unless it's like where you are, Brian, where it's sunny 24-7, 365 a year. <laughs> but certainly in England, uh, or in Great Britain, it's it's seasonal. So, you know, motorcycle dealers, they're, they're not busy all year round, obviously. So you need, you know, the industry needs as much help as possible. And if people, young people especially, are put off uh, becoming motorcyclists, uh, then, of course, that reflects bike sales in the long run and of course these youngsters are almost forced into cars of which they can't really afford to run especially you know if you're talking you know two three hundred quid for a for a car you know an old car to get you going but then you're paying fifty two thousand plus for your insurance it, it's just a crazy scenario it really is um, in other words they can't afford to run a car whereas a bike you know a, a scooter or some kind of moped or whatever to get them mobile to get them to and from work <coughs> if, if a bus is not an option or a train then you know, let's do it, let's get a bike, let's get a moped, um, because there's, it's the best option. And of course, the roads are less congested. However, they don't do that. They don't encourage uh, motorcycling. As I said at the start, it, it's seen as, as some kind of um, nuisance. And, uh, and I personally think that after doing advanced riding for the IAM, Institute for Advanced Motorists, uh, plus some other bits and pieces of training that I've done since 2004, because uh, you know when I got back to biking after 14 years away due to family commitments you know I, initially I rode a Honda NTV 4650 that's a Honda Doville or 
Deville V twin, beautiful bike. Um, and so, you know, after 14 years off, I, I was able, although all I was able to do, all, all that was stopping me was financial, but in 2004, I was able financially to buy this bike. I wanted uh, an ST1300 Pan-European, but uh, me being a, a sensible kind of guy, always have been, always going against uh, my own generation's ways, which, you know, always been on the cautious side. And that's the way I like it. I may so the rest. So, I decided to buy this Doville instead of the Pan because I thought, mm, it's 14 years, it's a long time. I've been driving um, throughout most of this time, like I'm doing now for, for work. Um, so, it's not like I've been off-road, you know, I've actually been on the road and kept, kept up with uh, traffic and everything. But I haven't ridden a motorbike. So I thought I'd start small. So I got the 650. However, five months later, I um, I said to Lynn, I said, right, I think I'm ready for the Pan-European. Um, I was really, you know, they always say, don't they? You know, you never forget how to ride a bike. And <laughs> I suppose, they're talking just about bicycles Turn there, but I suppose motorbikes is the same, it's just more power. And so I was ready, and it wasn't until 2005 um, that I actually did a day's training. So I rode for, you know, o over a year, or, or just about a year maybe, um, you know, self self-learning basically. And when you think about it, you know, you've got a, a, a 1300 V4, powerful bike, underneath you, and, and and you've been off, and the last one you had was a 750 Kawasaki, and you've been off the, the road, off motorcycles for over a decade, and it's quite, quite spooky really, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, you know, I couldn't believe it, I had to pinch myself that I, I owned such a fabulous bike and I still love that bike and if I could have the FJR and the Pan, I would do. They're my two babies. That and the 1600 GTL E BMW, I do like that, the six cylinder, the inline six, I do like that. Um, he was wrong there, he's a learner. Now he overtook me as a set of likes. He should not have done that. But, he did that one too many times and uh, come to grief. So now we're on Portland Street, entering into Portland Street here in the city centre of Manchester. Getting quite busy now. It's 500 yards. Manchester tram tram system here, the line is just crossing over. The road's in a shocking state as you can see. If you look at the bonnet of the car going up and down, you can see just exactly how uh, in bad shape it is. Bang. <coughs> so, as I said, whilst I'm totally in agreement with motorcyclists have an extra training and, and um, decide what you're doing matey. Now that card wanted to come in there so just be careful. I, I still think that um, you know restrictions on car drivers, new car drivers should apply also i.e. extra training, well, certainly motorway training um, I mean, as it is now, you can pass your test and you don't get any... Well, I'm saying you don't, I'm not sure. There might be some referral to 
motorway driving in, in the classroom or online, I don't know. Uh, I'm not 100% certain, but it used to be that, you know, you could pass your test and, and go straight onto a, onto a motorway where speeds, you know, in excess of 70, 80 miles an hour are achieved. Uh, yes, you're travelling in the same direction, so in that respect, they are much, much safer roads, really. But a car driver can, can pass his test, his or her test, and basically buy uh, a Porsche. You know, if he, he or she can afford it, he or she can drive anything um, within reason. And that can't be right, because you've no idea of stuff around you, but it's all about it. I mean, the guy, you can't see him now, he's off camera, but the guy on the motorbike that, that overtook me at the lights, he's on my right. And, you know, you can see, when you're sat in a car like this, you can see exactly how vulnerable and how exposed a motorcyclist is. When you're riding one yourself, you don't feel it, you're part of it. But when you see them, you, you think to yourself, yeah, you know, uh, they are vulnerable. And, you know, if you get the wrong kind of drivers on the road around you, well, you're even more vulnerable. Um, so I think every, every single car driver should, in my view, have some basic training. <coughs> Excuse me on two wheels <clears throat> it's essential because not only does it make you aware of, of motorcyclists um, and, you know but it also makes you aware of the challenges that motorcyclists face i.e. road conditions you know um, you know, you, you, you're just more vulnerable. You, I mean, one thing that a car driver, pure car driver, I mean, look at this cyclist here, he's just crossed over. He's actually on red there. He's just come across the road there. They're a flipping nuisance, they are. They really are. Now, this guy's here coming. Uh, right. Um, now, what most if not all um, car drivers don't appreciate Just ahead. about Drive motorcycles ahead. is when you're out on the road you know and say it's a 60 limit, it's a national speed limit which is 60 miles an hour and 70 on a dual carriageway and less posted well if you're behind a car on a 60 zone and he's doing 48 miles an hour, then, you know, if it's safe and legal to do so, unlike that cyclist who are going through red light, absolutely blatant red light, that's what you're up against. Um, what were I going to say then? Oh yeah. So you're on the road, now that cyclist say he's gone through red, disgraceful. They have to adhere to the law just like we do, but they don't, and then they wonder why they get knocked off. But of course it's always the fucking car driver's fault. In fact, if a cyclist gets hurt, it's automatically um, the car driver's fault because car is much bigger than the cycle so it's automatically assumed that the car driver was at fault and that's why I've got the camera in this car apart from doing little entertaining videos like this um, I think they're vital in today's um, crazy crazy world anyway so you're riding along you're behind a car on a national speed limit open road country road and he's doing 48 miles an hour and you're allowed to do 60 well obviously on a bike you're going to make 
want to make progress. You don't sit behind the car because the car is a, is a hazard and when you're advanced it will actually fail you for doing that. Overtake if you feel comfortable doing it, you're not forced to do it, however if you sat behind the car within one or two seconds distance doing 48, 50 miles an hour, well then you're putting yourself more at risk than if you attempt to do a safe overtake. Because what car drivers don't realise is that when you go to overtake a car like that and there's ample opportunities for to overtake and you've just executed a perfect manoeuvre but there are there's a car coming towards you but you've got back into your correct position in the in the inside lane or your side of lane your side of road and that car often coming towards you puts his headlights on in anger because he thinks that you have put yourself at risk by overtaking that vehicle and it's simply this they do not realize the power and acceleration that a motorcycle has you know sudden acceleration i'm not talking like eventually getting up to what is speed i'm talking about sudden acceleration and that's the key you have on a motorcycle especially you know powerful bike like the fjr you have an enormous amount of um, horsepower at your disposal and i don't mean use it um, in a stupid way i'm talking about using it in a sensible way and using that power to actually get you out of situations so if car drivers um, were sort of encouraged or oh, this is a danger here posting on Facebook can you see what he's done now he's parked on yellow lines in a zigzag area of a crossing now there were a lady and you might have seen it on my Facebook page there was a lady getting out with her child yesterday on, on the out on the roadside so not only was her back end of a car sticking out like a sore thumb um, she was getting her child so exposing herself and her child to a vehicle and in this case it was me coming towards her so illegally parked irresponsible uh, behavior with a with a child um, so that child will, will grow up and do exactly the the what she has done right so we've arrived I'm going to continue with our our chats uh, when I've gone into the hospital we've arrived at St Mary's hospital in uh, in Manchester um, this is called the boulevard this is all new and um, if I just turn the camera that way you can perhaps see it there that's the uh, that's the entrance and uh, just put that back there. yeah it's a, it's a nice hospital it does a nice feel about it um, and uh, so what I'm collecting is from is uh, from uh, radio pharmacy or nuclear medicine and I'm collecting the uh, isotope for nuclear medicine at Royal Blackburn.